Hey, what's up, y'all? And of course, welcome to another Alternative Factuals video. So today we're going to be covering the second issue of Bitterroot. Now, the first issue was very interesting. Uh, a lot of things happened. It took place uh, between Harlem and Mississippi. So, uh, you know, before I do anything, please be sure to like, share, and of course, subscribe. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're feeling. And without further ado, no possible do, let's kind of just jump straight into uh, issue number two. So this takes place in Mississippi, 1924. Now, if you remember in the last issue, the last thing we saw was Cullen and Berg. They were dealing with a genu that was actually in St. Nicholas Park um, that had killed pretty much two officers. And uh, they were abducting people in the middle of the night, which is one of the reasons why they were pretty much out there. Besides the fact that they had to dump those little, the bodies of people who previously were a genu. But we're down in the Southern Mississippi, 1924, and we catch up with the KKK Klan member who um, was about to clinch a black man. And you see this dude is scared. He's like, you kill them, you kill them all. But then realizing quickly that they were not the people that he thought they were. He turns around and they look ugly. They look crazy. They look like werewolves and vampires and they, they just look out of control. So essentially this young man here, well, I say he's more like in his 40s. This man here, this black man comes with a gun that looks a little wonky and starts blasting them away and pretty much takes them all out. And then we just go back to St. Nicholas Park in Harlem, same day, um, same day, um, same night. I'm about to say same damn time, listen in the future. But, <laughs> but yeah, so this is taking place in St. Nicholas Park in Harlem now. So Berg and Cullen are pretty much, we're dealing with this whole genu because one, he popped up and kind of surprised them. But one thing that we notice is that Berg is out and he kind of has this mark on his head, but also too, that Cullen seems to be standing and kind of like seeing this genu not only speak clear and like perfectly good English, but also it knows who they are. And it says step aside, meaning its intention is not to hurt them. The Saringe family, their goal is something else. You know, they're obviously feeding on people, but they're not trying to make an enemy out of this family. And obviously that's going to lead to a bigger reason as we keep reading. But you already know that, you know, Cullen can't let that happen. Berg says, stay behind me. Well, he says to Berg to stay behind him. And then he's trying to make sure that he does not get to this woman. Now, one of the police officers who we thought was dead because it looked like he took his head clean off off but i think that was probably the other police officer he lets off about like four or five rounds into this creature and then he pretty much turns around and says uh you're pretty much dumb for thinking that was gonna work and uh yeah so i'm now i want to kill you for sure for sure and pretty much takes him out completely and rest in peace to that officer now, i don't know if i was gonna you know be rooting for his character um he seemed like he was a jerk but at the same time he was still willing to you know put his life on the line for the job but nonetheless he's dead so uh Colin actually jumps on him tries to beat him down but Berg is like yo you must retreat because if you put the works on me and I'm like 10 times your size he's gonna work you and he was like yes retreat or die this is the genu speaking and then Colin's just like that that's the strongest genu I've ever seen and that's coming from a prof professional someone who does this on a regular so if he can't even put a dent in this one then you know it's clearly out of control but what's really interesting is this creature or what they thought was a genu says i'm no genu this is what i came for and then picks up one of the bodies and picks up a girl that was there that they were trying to protect and essentially leaves with those bodies and colin says leave them be they ain't got nothing to do to you and the genu or whatever they thought the genu was says they are survival meaning there's something on something bigger going on here and obviously as this creature is running by them you have these two black officers that look and they're just like well uh, did we just see what we thought we just saw like did, did i think that i thought that you thought that i think that i thought that, that i just saw and it was like well uh yeah i think we need to we need to get to the park and then we go back to mississippi same night same day 1924 and then the clans member pretty much says you black bastard and i'm like how are you gonna insult the dude who saved your life but nonetheless he, he goes on rambling oh you killed them all my friends my family you murdered them all in cold blood and you already know what he's about to say he's like in cold blood they was about to lynch this man right here they was about to lynch him they i didn't kill him in cold blood they've lynched people plenty of times if anything this was justice and he was like oh since these are your people too and since you want to call them your people maybe i should take you out too and this dude immediately flips he was like well hold up now you know i didn't really know him like that i mean i wasn't cool with them like that you feel me like i was just there you know i got caught up in the you know the movement i, I got you know I, I was brainwashed you know I, I'm, I'm good bro so he want to flip instantly, meaning one, he's a punk, 
but also there's a good uh, kind of interesting situation that comes out of this conversation. So what we find out about the Genu is people turn into Genu when their souls are infected. At least that's what the, you know, what this gentleman here is saying. When you never spill innocent blood, then, you know, you will, you'll stay pure. Your soul will stay pure. But if you've killed someone, if you've done something to someone innocent, it will transform your body. It will transform your soul into this creature because of the amount of hate, the damage you've done to the natural order by killing someone, by doing something impure. And you will corrupt your body, your mind, and your soul. And obviously you can be cleansed, but in order to stay cleansed, you have to make sure you don't spill blood. So that's kind of what we get from this whole thing. But also we find out that he is somebody else who is from the Serenge family. And it's really dope to find out that this family has big roots pretty much all over the country. Um, Cause we actually do realize that um, his name is Ford Serenge. Now I'm pretty sure I'm pretty like, you know, butchering this last name because it says Sange. You know, I, I just say Sange, but Sange. But essentially he's a part of the family that we know about that takes, well, that kind of functions out of Harlem, close to Nicholas Park, which we were just covering a few minutes ago. So that's what's really dope about this. But we go back to San Juan Hill in New York City, where we catch up with a gentleman who had, in the last one, kind of, you know, had a vision using some potion. But he's having a conversation with what seems to be like this creature. And he says, like, coming to take my soul, here comes the devil, coming to take my soul, which is essentially a song. And he says, you're back. Did they see you? Which we find out it's the creature who ultimately grabbed up these two people and brought them right back to this gentleman. So now it kind of ties back to the first issue where we find out that he's trying to work with the Sunge, uh, the Sunge family, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't quite know exactly how he wants to go about it. But we do know nonetheless that he's trying to work with them and that's the reason why this creature did not attack them. And then kind of when we get an idea of who this person is and when this person de-transforms, we find out it's the woman who was in chapter one that was with him this entire time. So they have the sense of loyalty to, you know, I would have died in Tulsa with all the others. You, you take such good care of me, meaning he was a survivor of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And, you know, I'm pretty sure his soul and even her soul might have been tainted because of, um, you know, the hatred and they probably might have spilled blood or maybe they are a new type of genu that has come into existence because of the level of hate that they've experienced but we don't know yet all we know is that there's the survivors of tulsa and that the woman that he was with ultimately was the creature abducting people but he does ask and make sure like hey have these uh have these two been purified which is the reason why they went and targeted the senge family when they were dumping those bodies because they had to make sure that they were purified bodies because obviously they're going to use their blood or use their body for some reason after they've been purified and then she essentially says until they become infected again the sun gays still believe purification is the answer so essentially the um the doctor here and uh, she feel like you know purification is only very temporary they cannot change they will never change people who take you know innocent blood people who take innocent lives they will no longer change and that the sun gays are just making the serum as like the strongest form of purifier when in reality the serum is not you know what is needed in terms of for them but they seem to be turning into something and they need the serum for themselves to control what they are turning into which kind of hints back at my theory that i think because of the hate that they experience because of the things that they've been going through they themselves are transforming because the hatred that they may feel it towards let's say white people or you know whoever did them wrong is starting to really eat at them and eat at their soul and they're starting to transform into creatures that represent what they feel on the inside but what we immediately see in the next frame is that they feed off of purified souls now specifically they can't be pure souls they have to be souls that were you know tainted and transformed into genu but then purified by the Sange family. And then that's the only way they can consume these people and that will keep them alive. So we see there's a lot of things going on here. The Sungay family seems to be split. There seems to be different factions of the Sungay family who all derive from, you know, a very similar ancestor. Then there seems to be, you know, Genu themselves where they turn into these creatures, these hateful creatures, and, you know, they have to purify them. But also there seems to be a new breed of Genu, which is what they're turning into where they can't feed off of people 
and they can't feed off of unpure souls. They have to feed off of people who've been purified already, meaning they have to have some sort of hate that's been purified. So it's like it's a dilution kind of situation, but it seems like this is what they're turning into. And what we're seeing in a common theme is usually this Genu, at least from what we've seen so far, are white because this does take place during the early 1900s, around 1924. So this is a time when racism was at its peak and this is when, you know, white people really hated black people. So a lot of these Genu were like just, you know, mostly white people. But it seems like they're getting at the fact that black people can turn into a Genu as well. But it seems to be a different type of Genu where they have to feed off of these purified souls that at one point were tainted but aren't anymore. But we go back down to Mississippi with uh, Ford Senge, where he brings back the young boy who was actually about to be lynched by the KKK clan down in Mississippi. And he brings him back to the grandparents when they thought like they thought they was gonna lose their son, uh, the grandson. And he thanks them, the, the grandmother, the grandfather, they thank him. And they really just like appreciate his services. And it seems like pretty much too, the grandfather and the grandmother know who they are because it says a crying shame Ain't enough good purifiers left in this world. And near as I can tell, we need more of them now more than ever. And Ford essentially says, I don't purify, I amputate. And then amputate, I was like, days of purifying are over. There's no curing the genome. Ain't enough root work in the world to purify, purify them all. All we need, all we can do is kill. And they was like, oh, kill them. But ain't they human? Deep down inside, and he was like, words get out that someone amputated some genu souls and trouble might come calling again. Take this for protection. Pellets in the shell have soaked in pulp made from a uh, fifno root, um, which is essentially used to kill the genu. But uh, I'm going to brush back by that point to kind of kind of get this point across. So what's really dope about this is that I believe the factions of the Sange family has split because we have some of them who believe that you know, purifying is the best way to do it, but resources are limited. And then you have parts of the Sungay family that, you know, use it to simply kill them because there is no purifying. Because the second you purify them, they might turn back or there's more of them that you need to purify than there is of this root that you need in order to transform them back to human. So I'm pretty sure this is a part of the reason why a lot of these factions are split. But we're going to catch back up to uh, Cullen and Berg. And we find out that Cullen transformed into a Genu himself. But what's so weird about it is he's still in control. He doesn't feel angry. He didn't have any hatred. But somehow he's still infected. But he's still himself. So it seems like this infection that these uh, other Genu had, the doctor and the, the woman who was working with this um, to feed off for the purified souls there seems to be an infection going around that looks like can only be passed down from one person of color to another but we don't know the details of that yet we just know that now berg is infected and now they're trying to figure out how they're going to fix him but let me know if you enjoy some videos like this in the comments down below and if you're new to the channel be sure to like share and of course subscribe and let me know in the comments down below how you feel and i'll talk to y'all later peace